you know what guys, let's start in child's pose tonight. And if you want, you can take a blanket and you can put a blanket or a pillow between the heels and the bum and come down onto child's pose or you can just come into your normal child's pose. So that's our first shake tonight. Nice. And maybe even releasing your elbows and forearms onto the floor and just see about this first shake is just dropping the weight into the floor. And breathing in and out. <clears throat> and then dropping the breath into the body. And then dropping our awareness into the body. Maybe being aware of the breath to begin by a four count inhale, four count exhale, just to bring that mind body breath connection here. And then perhaps just eventually letting that go and just maybe noticing the heartbeat. And perhaps being absorbed entirely in this moment. Perhaps bringing your awareness to the sound of the singing bowl and anchoring into that sound. Allowing your face to soften in your child's pose. Maybe you even just tuck the pelvis slightly and feel the hips drop a little bit more towards the heels. Now, guys, what's so you're ready, making your way into your first rebound. Maybe on the belly, maybe on the back. Just making your way there without rush. 
without expectation, allowing it to be if you were experiencing the three down for the first time. And let the breath go, guys. Dropping in. This inward journey again. We have our thread the needle posture, shape, state of consciousness for this evening to guide us. Threading the needle, untangling a knot that is my life. The knot becomes my teacher. Gathering the threads into one, unraveling the closed up space. A glimmer of light surfaces between strands. The needle that is sharp at dawn might be broken by dusk. The thread that is straight today doesn't know it will be knotted tomorrow. The knot that is tangled today could be woven into gold 10 years from now. That is why I thread the needle, honoring the odds, steadying my arms, softening my breath, Working the knot, trusting. Inviting those words, the essence behind them to fill the ethos tonight. <laughs> Enveloping our soul in those words and its essence, perhaps guiding our practice. Now making your way onto your back if you're not there already. And finding that strap that perhaps is already looped. As we mentioned earlier, bringing that buckle on the inside of the leg. So the loop goes over the foot and the buckle and that loose end is on the inside of that right leg. And then adjusting the loop as big or small as you want. Bend the knee and bring the loop behind the head. Most of the time it's under the ponytail for us and for those who don't have ponytails, it might be above the ear, but it's behind the head. Feel it completely secure on the head. And adjust the length so you can have a, maybe a soft bend in the knee. But your head is off the ground, so you might feel the stretch across the back of the neck. Maybe across the back of the leg, maybe one place more than another, or not at all. That left foot, that leg can be long. It might feel a little nicer on your SI joint if that foot on the left leg is, is on the ground. So either way, grounded or long with that left foot and leg. But that right leg is in this hammock. And then dropping into the shape, we close the eyes if that feels okay. We're going to be here for a little while, maybe a little bit longer than we often spend in our yin shapes. So get comfortable and just know that you're not committed to this. You can make it smaller or larger at any time. Thank you. 
perhaps that tool of the breath, anchoring the mind. And then the strap, just like the threads of a needle, unraveling, knotting, being woven into gold. Maybe breathing in and out a few rounds throughout the shape, sighing, audible, inhale or exhale. <clears throat> you can make the loop bigger or smaller anytime. Maybe you notice the rise and fall in the chest as that chin is probably tucked a little bit with this neck and the strap. Maybe bringing awareness to the space at the base of the throat. Compressing the hip flexor group, compressing the throat just a little bit here. Perhaps noticing the sole of the foot. Behind the knee, the leg, within the hands, the palms resting on the earth. Good guys.
And now here, just bringing both hands to the strap, both sides. And then we're gonna first release, bending the knee and to release the neck, just slowly slide that, slide off the back of the neck and lowering down the shoulders and the head of control. And then releasing that leg down, bending the knee. Finding our rebound here, let that strap come to the side. And exhale down here on the earth. Just noticing where that chi is flowing, being free. You might notice the throat, the back of the leg, the front of the hip flexors, the arms. Noticing if one leg feels longer than the other. And an exhale, let the breath go. Remain in our rebound. I'll count us down from five, and four, three, two. Let's give ourselves a deep inhale. Exhale together for one. Oh. Now let the breath go. And we're gonna come into our cat pulling its tail. I'm gonna give us some options for this because we often do one variation but not another. So we're gonna roll over onto our right side and let the arm be the pillow underneath the head. And with that arm under the head, let the arm come long. And then the left leg kind of bring that knee kind of in front of the hips. So the left knee might be down or onto a block. And then bring that right foot towards the glute. And with that top left hand, we're gonna bring the foot towards the hand, the hand towards the foot, yep. And then hold that foot in the hand and maybe you feel a stretch in the quad, the right quad. Now, if this is really uncomfortable and you don't feel like you can relax, then guess what? You can roll onto your stomach, lie flat with the forehead come on top of that left forearm and bring the right hand behind you and find the foot. And it's gonna be the same effect. And then we also have our strap. So our strap is there as well. So go ahead and either pull the cat's tail with that left hand reaching behind you. And hopefully you feel a stretch in your quad. If you don't feel a stretch in your quad, then uh, give me a wave and we'll find a different way to do this. So that's where you want to feel it, is that fascia in the top of that right leg. And then of course you might feel it across the top of that left shoulder, the front of the shoulder. These meridians of the lungs and the heart. And then threading the needle here, right? Bringing these strands together, weaving all parts of ourselves into one. See if you can relax the face and let go of the effort, maybe in the right arm, if you're clenching the palm or the fist. Letting go of the tongue from the roof of the mouth, letting it rest in between the teeth. Grounding into your own being. Mm -hmm. 
Our knees bent, we <clears throat> offer a little bit of digestion on a physical level. But also earlier we compressed that chin to the chest, which is the space for expression. So giving ourselves the ability to digest, perhaps what we need to express, bringing clarity for expression here. Untangling a knot that is my life. We unravel this fascia, we can unravel the areas of our lives that we can perhaps bring clarity to and find a little bit more use for or harness our energy in a productive way. Let's slowly release that hand from the foot and watch that foot so it doesn't flail and flop down. Try to release, release the hand, but, and then activate the back of that right leg and bring that foot down slowly. The right foot coming to the ground, the left hand becoming in front of the body. And then we'll exhale onto the back body and we'll come into that rebound. Oh. Release in the back of that right leg with our hammock shape, and now the front of that right leg with our cat pulling its tail. So perhaps now this right leg might feel quite a bit different than the left leg. Or it might feel the same. Let's scan the body from the sole of the right foot up the right side of the body to that right shoulder and then across the the chest from right shoulder to left shoulder, and then down the left side of the body, out the left sole of the foot. And then exhale to drop into the back of the body. Let the breath go. And then counting our rebound down from five, four, Three, two, and one. And then find that strap that we started with. We're gonna come into our hammock shape on the left side. So maybe bring that left foot to the ground and bend the knee, bring that strap across the ball of the foot, extend the leg somewhat long, but still bent, and then slide the back of the head onto the strap, let the leg then come as long or straight as you want and make sure that that clasp and the free thread is on the inside of the leg so you can easily adjust it as we begin to rest into the shape. And then as you're ready, 
Maybe exhale and begin the shape, bringing in this state of consciousness of this hammock, the spreading the needle, the surrender, the suspension of spirit, of effort, and drop into the shape. And letting go of any idea that there's a right way or wrong way to do this. Gathering the threads into one, unraveling the closed up space a glimmer of light surfaces between the strands. Seeing that glimmer of light between all and any of our maybe lessons is the word, sometimes it has a negative connotation, but all of our experiences, seeing that glimmer of light in all of them, inviting it in, We'll exhale, let it go. And drop into this compression of the low throat, the hip flexors, those hips, kind of where the emotions like to hide out. And then that throat is that center of expression, often by speaking or other creative expression. So we're kind of compressing both of those places, perhaps inspiring release of emotions, words, but all of our highest good. There might be a little compression on that left side of the torso, that descending colon, also supporting digestion, but also supporting our nourishment here. Allowing the eyes to rest into the back of the head and the tongue up off of the roof of the mouth. It's behind the top teeth or the roof of the mouth. Maybe the cheeks soften and maybe the space behind the earlobe softens as well.
Good, allow the breath to come and go a few more times. And then as you're ready, make your way out of this shape slowly and with awareness as you slide it off the back of the head. Keep that chin compressed when lower down with control of the neck. Then bend that knee and let that leg come long. And let out a breath of release here as the body becomes long. Really nice job, you guys. Allowing that chi to move, to, to flow, to rest, to nourish our entire being, one cell at a time. We'll count this down from five, four, three, draw the breath in for two, and exhale for one. Good guys, and then when you're ready, rolling over onto that left side, letting that left arm come underneath the head. So you can rest your arm on the bicep. The right knee maybe comes in front of the right hip and makes its way to the ground or to a block. And then slide that left heel towards the left glute. And maybe find the foot with the hand, the right hand, the top hand. And then kind of pull that knee back with the right hand. And if that doesn't feel okay on this side, we'll come onto the belly. And then the right arm is a pill of the forehead and that left hand finds the foot. So that's our variation. Let out a breath, drop into the belly, maybe the sacral chakra just below the navel. Breathe into that space and exhale. And if you're on your belly and you aren't feeling it as much in the quad, you can bring a block underneath the quad which is going to elevate it from the hip, and then you can pull on that foot if you're on your belly. And this bent knee supporting that stomach, that stomach meridian, giving us that ability to trust our guts, Breathing into that sacral chakra just below the navel. That intuition, that inner knowing. Kind of a primal instinct, but dropping into that intuition here. The needle that is sharp at dawn might be broken by dust. Inviting in that ebb and flow of life, that impermanence. Really nice breath, you guys. Good job. Thank you. 
Guys, with control, release that hand from the foot. Activating the muscle in that right leg or that left leg, so it moves with control. And then, as you're ready, make your way to your belly or to the backs for your rebound. Just dropping into the shape of rebound. Nice, guys. On the front of the body or the back. Bring your awareness to that sacral chakra just below the navel. And as you bring your awareness there, just imagine that as you breathe in and out, it's an orange color, breathing in the color orange and exhaling the color orange. And the whole body becomes orange as you breathe in and out. Just bringing in that gut instinct, allowing this thread to be a golden orange. Now counting down from five. Four, three, two, and one. Now as you're ready, let's gently roll over onto the stomach if you're not there already. And then just kind of press up into table. And in this table, maybe letting go of a deep breath. Exhaling. And then from here, maybe bringing that left hand under the heart and just sliding it forward just a little bit. So it's not quite under the forehead, it's a little bit in front of the head. And we'll bring that right arm up to sky. And then bring that right arm underneath the body, underneath the chest, the back of the hand to the floor. And then lower down the chest, lower down that right arm, adjust the knees as you need to, to come, in, to come in to thread the needle. The right shoulder might hover over the floor and that gaze can either be towards the right or you can bring the forehead to the floor or the gaze can be to the left. Just honor what feels best. The neck, the back and the shoulder. And see if you can drop into this thread the needle. Out and exhale, relax the tongue in the mouth. Ah. 
Again, inviting in that impermanence, the thread that is straight today. Does it know that it will be knotted tomorrow? And a knot, remember, a knot isn't a bad thing. A knot ties up loose ends. So sometimes those things that we think might be detrimental are actually just tying things up, loose ends, keeping things together. Moving into the upper back, maybe the space in the thoracic region between the ribs, each little rib. Good job, you guys. Uh, that mind wanders, we're bringing it back to that third eye point between the eyebrows and the forehead. Another point of intuition, this time a little bit more spiritual centric and a primal centric intuition. Having freed up that throat chakra and those emotions, we'll be inviting in that spiritual intuition through your third eye point. Exhale. Slowly unthread that needle, that right arm, that arm coming under, maybe it comes to the top towards the sky as you plant the left hand and then bring that arm down and let's come into our rebound either on the belly or on the back of the body. It doesn't matter which way you land, just allow yourself to land, to rebound. Oh, I could let sigh. <laughs> You might move the head side to side and then drop into the back body or drop onto the front body and pause. Maybe noticing the heart beating in your chest. We might have compressed the heart. It's not like we did physically compress the heart but it might have felt that way as we had ourselves a little bit tighter in the chest. So allowing this heart to reopen. Exhale. Good guys, counting down from five and four and three and two and one, exhale. 
Let's slowly make our way to our belly. We'll be tuning into the heart and the beating of the heart as we roll onto the belly. Let's bring our elbows underneath the shoulders and the tops of the feet flat, the tops of the legs on the earth. And now let's inhale and just come into a sphinx shape. The palms, the forearms can be flat. Really good job, you guys. And you can either stay here in your sphinx and imagine that heart opening. We threaded that needle a moment ago. We're gonna open the chest now. You can either stay in sphinx or if you want, straighten out the arms, but lock the elbows where you can bring the hands on either side of the mat like a Y, but keep those elbows locked. Coming into our seal shape. And maybe drop into that solar plexus or that sacral chakra beneath the navel. Maybe soften the gaze and then feel your heart beating in your chest, maybe resonating with the vibration of the singing bowl. The knot that is tangled today could be woven into gold 10 years from now. Allow that to resonate to the depths of your heart. Trusting in dormancy, trusting in the budding of new experiences, and trusting in the tried and true, the faithful, the gut instinct and that spiritual intuition being woven together, bringing awareness now to that third eye. Come it down from 10. Exhale, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two. And one, slowly bending elbows. If you're not already, lowering elbows to the floor. And if your elbows are already on the floor, now we can all bring ourselves to rest on the cheek or the forehead. The palms can come underneath the head. They can go long or to the side of the body. And we'll rebound here after our seal, after our sphinx. You feel that heart beating, that heart resonating as a bridge between that spiritual intuition of the third eye and that gut instinct of the sacral chakra. Threading the needle, honoring all of our parts. Maybe breathing into that sacral chakra and letting go, activating our diaphragm. And then counting down from five, 
four, three, two, and one. Let's gently press up to our table, slowly moving from this rebounded position. Ah, to tabletop, to coming to our thread the needle with our left hand this time. So that right hand can come under the heart and maybe you slide it forward kind of in front of where the head is. And then bring that left arm out to the side, maybe all the way up to the sky if you want. And then bring it under the heart, the left elbow, maybe the shoulder coming towards the ground. The right arm can slide forward. And then let's exhale here, guys, to drop into this threading the needle position. Maybe that awareness on the third eye, maybe it's on the sacral chakra, maybe it's on the heart. And you feel the energy from your third eye flowing through the heart to your sacral chakra. And you trace that energy back from your sacral chakra to your heart, to your third eye. And that heart chakra serves as that bridge from our lower chakras to our higher chakras. That is why I thread the needle, honoring the odds, steadying my arms, softening my breath, working the knots, trusting. Count it down here, guys, from five and four, three and two, and one. Letting go of the breath, maybe sliding that right hand a little bit towards the head and lifting the chest, the shoulder, unthreading that left arm. Good guys, a table. I mean, yeah, if you want a cow or a cat and then coming into your heart or even have Shavasana, there's no rush to get there. Allowing yourself to drop into this final rebound, this Shavasana.
Good guys, allowing yourself to rest. The body to absorb all the benefits of your practice. All the weaving, the threading.
and so like slowly open and close the hands, drawing the fingers towards the palms and then opening the hands up again. Giving yourself a few more moments here to just marinate in your practice. And then when you're ready, just slowly making your way up to a seated position or however you'd like to close tonight. Maybe you remain in Shavasana. Bring that awareness to our heart space, that bridge to our sacral chakra beneath the navel. And our third eye point, just think between the eyes and up a little bit. And then back to the heart. And then we'll close together, drawing the breath in. And out, and in, exhale, close, oh, shanti, 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 oh. Mm. Mm. Yeah.